welcome to Cage Radio with Christine. This is the place for you, the diva boss entrepreneur, who needs quick tips on building your praiseworthy brand. This is your host, Nicole Doss, CEO of the Prestige Society, a membership organization for women entrepreneurs who believe in building powerful networks while slaying in their industries. So I want you to go ahead and grab your favorite cup of coffee and get your favorite tips right here with Christine. Hey, 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 girl bosses. I'm so excited to uh, speak with you today. Listen, this is a special message uh, from me to you. I actually was scheduled to release two um, interviews that I've done, one with our Smart and Tidy sisters and the other one with the sisters from non Tradish. But uh, God just laid something on my heart and I wanted to share with you. I will give you this warning now. If you are not a believer, if hearing about scriptures and God and blah, 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 blah bothers you or offends you, you may not want to listen to this episode. Um, sorry, um, but not sorry. Um, but if you are someone who's a believer who is building a business and you feel frustrated by what you are experiencing, I want you to stay tuned. I want you to take some time into listening to this particular episode. So... I really struggled with what I was going to call this, but I think it's going to be the second segment or second installment to the false doctrine of the girl boss. And so this particular segment is going to be on being absolutely intentional in what you pray for. But of course, that comes with some caveat. And I, and I want to explain to you why. This past weekend was the Pray and Slay conference that uh, Davida Garfield, Elaine Gonzalez Johnson, and I uh, put together. And it was a labor of love. And I am super, super excited that we did it because I never thought that I would be able to do a conference, but there's power in numbers. And the fact that I was able to pull it off with the help of my um, sisters in business, I was super duper excited about that. But I think more importantly, what's really uh awesome to have witnessed was the spiritual presence that was in the place. God being in the room, God being able to speak to women who have never picked up a Bible in their lives, post it, that they actually bought a Bible for the first time. I cannot tell you that I never thought in a million years that God would use me to bring people closer through Christ, through my business. I always thought that my ministry was just through, um, it was just through singing. So at church, I sing. I love to sing at church. I feel God's anointing when I sing. If I, you know, when I lead a song, I definitely am in a place where I focus on how he can use me to remove me from the equation and just for God to give me the opportunity to use my voice to bless others and to bring uh, them closer to, to, to him. So that's what I always thought my, my ministry was. And that's always what I thought I, you know, where I thought I excelled, but the fact that I was able to use an opportunity to co-create and to collaborate brands with these two other awesome women of God and to bring to the, you know, our, our audiences, this wonderful, um, opportunity to bless people. I, it was phenomenal. And so today, as I was dropping off my little munchkin daycare, one of the things that really, um, I really struggled with is the girl boss and their prayer life. And I think it's because somewhere down the line, there has been this co-mingling of new age and Christianity. So for those of you who are not aware if you are a Christian, you, you can't practice new age beliefs. They just they just don't coincide. And anyone who says that they do, they are selling you false doctrine. Um, and so I'm trying to pull up the uh, new age definition as we speak. Okay, so here we go because I found it for you. So it says new age is a broad movement characterized by alternative approaches to traditional Western culture with an interest in... Uh, spirituality, mysticism, holism, and environmentalism. So basically, if you do sage, if you um, look at crystals and go to crystals for things, if you do tarot, car tarot, tarot card readings, um, things of that nature, that's all under that new age umbrella. And Christianity says that you should not 
or would not um, want to get into the um, I would say, you know, the, the heresies of, of, you know, fortune telling. Also, you know, the Bible and the gospel tells you that you will not um, worship false idols. And that the only thing that is going to remove any spirits from your or bad energy from your space is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, Jesus Christ, God and the Holy Spirit. That That's who's going to do that. And so when you look at inanimate items to do those things, then you're no longer falling under the umbrella of Christianity. The, the issue is that um, it's so on trend. It's so on trend with being a girl boss, with being a queen, with queen adjust your crown that, you know, I literally can scroll on my timeline and see either women who are lighting sage, women who are placing crystals around their baths. And I do say, though, um, I use Himalayan salt, but Himalayan salt rocks have a scientific, um, you know, ionic makeup that if you light it, it does things like create a calm experience. But what I don't do is I don't rely on that for my spiritual well-being. And I think that's the difference. For me, it's like lighting a candle. It's like lighting incense. These are things that help create a calming ambiance. But I no way, shape, or form create a ritual around it. And I know for some of you, you're like, oh my gosh, it is so not a ritual. But I'm telling you right now, I actually personally know someone who creates sages for others and thanked one of her customers for um, purchasing her sage for her bathing ritual. So they do, th those who are heavy in new age do call these things rituals. And you have to be mindful of it because that you really do walk a really dangerous line when you try to combine the two. The tricky part of this though, and I do not talk to you from sitting on high and looking down low. I talk to you as someone who went through coaching school who learned things that I was learning as a coach that was actually me learning things that were new age, hearing things from preachers and pastors and teachers who at the time fell under, or who still do, fall under what's called prosperity gospel, and I didn't know, and they were all combining everything together. And so this impacted how I prayed. This impacted not just how I prayed, but what I wasn't seeing when the prayers were not manifesting. And so um, with that, it was really hard for me to understand why not me. And so I want to talk about the girl boss and how we look at prayer, because the reality is, is that you need faith to get through. Uh, I think in the first false doctrine episode of the false doctrine of the girl boss, I shared that um, <laughs> there's all these influencers out here who are telling you that these tangible things, these things that are for personal gain are by God's design. And so what ends up happening too is that if someone told you that in order for you to be a successful entrepreneur that you have to make six uh, figures by your first year, the problem is is that and if you haven't or if you did not make six figures, then you're not really an entrepreneur. I, I shared with you that I beg to differ because I know that there's plenty of people in New York City. You just walk out of Penn Station and you'll see that there's on an average between two to three carts where you can buy food, whether it's chestnuts, whether it's roasted chestnuts or uh, hot dogs or pretzels, but you can buy it from those individuals who have the carts. And that's what they do. It is not a side hustle. That is the hustle for them. And if, they are not successful in uh, selling enough of those items to you, they can't pay their rent. They can't buy food for their families. And does that mean that they're not an entrepreneur because they didn't make six figures? Absolutely not, that's not the case. It just means that they're just not at that level. Maybe they need to think about how to franchise. Maybe they need to think about something a little bit differently. Or maybe their calling and where they're comfortable at is to get up every day and sell you those chestnuts. It does not mean that they're not an entrepreneur. So unfortunately, with this era, this this time that we're in, you are being told that your um, accrual of um, tangible things, this, this accrual of... of of riches, this this need for fame, this need for admiration, this need for recognition are all the things 
that you need in order to show you are blessed. And so we're not just hearing it in the churches, but then we're hearing it when we are looking through our timelines as well as hearing it. And it's not all churches, so let's just get that straight. We're hearing this in in churches who believe in the prosperity gospel. And so we're also hearing this too when you're going for a lot of these new age practice type of jobs. Think about it. So I went through a program for uh, coaching. I will spare the name because I do not believe in slandering. That is not something that I look to do. Um, But I will share my experience nonetheless. So there's a few things that we practiced that was about uh, how to meditate. And for me, you know, when we talk about prayer, prayer is meditation. So when I get up in the morning and when I, you know, I I pray, I, I meditate on prayer. I meditate on God's word. So that is something that is really important to me. I did not always do that. I relied on others to deliver a message to me that I trusted was the word of God. And that was how I received the word of God. And that was the only way I received the word of God. If I cracked open a Bible, if I opened up a Bible app, it was during the time where I was in church service and I needed to read the scripture for sermon. That's it. Right. Um, I'm sure I'm not alone. I'm sure others have, um, done that, but, um, you know, it's, it's just what my journey was at the time. And so what's really interesting is that when I was going through this coaching program, I was in this space where they would teach us this practice called positive visualization. And there was a number of ways that you can do this. The first thing you could do is you can create a vision board. Now, for those of you who go to vision board parties, I am sure you have never thought about vision board to this extent. But for people like myself who went through a coaching program who believed in um (laughs) who 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 really believed in the practice of the law of attraction and believed that it worked so well with scriptures like ask and you shall receive um then you would definitely see why i was so heavy in how i practice how i meditate or how i would meditate in prayer using the practice of law of attraction or using the things of visual, um, uh, positive visualization. So what they would teach you is that if you were practicing the law of attraction and if you created a vision board, you could not just look at the vision board. You had to have this daily reminder where you looked at these tangible things and you had to say, I, I see myself having this. So you had to like literally sit and look at this, this vision board and you had to meditate on these things. You see how tricky that is? How I just told you how now when I get up in the morning, I meditate in prayer and I meditate on God's word, but then I was taught to meditate on these things. I created literally a shrine, which was the actual vision board. Because I didn't just use any old cardboard. I created a beautiful cushion board where I used beautiful, cute little pins and perfectly arranged how I wanted certain things in my life. And everything I wanted was for personal gain. So I said, okay, I want um, paid membership. I want to have um, a blog. I want to be able to be paid for speaking engagements. These were things that actually ended up coming into fruition. And when I tell you I meditate on that thing, like nothing before. And for those of you listening, like, oh my gosh, look, see, you were able to talk it into existence. One, you can will something into existence, but you have to, but there's, there's not you that can will it. There's a partnership that has to happen. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. So you might be confused now, but I promise you I'm going to put all the, the dots together for you in a bit. So I would meditate on this thing. And at some point I had a friend in about 2008, 2009, who said to me, and it's so funny because I never imagined that he would be this person to say this because like Chuck never talked to me at all about religion spirituality or none of that so we were talking about the law of attraction at work one day and he was like listen nicole like be mindful because anything that you do with law of attraction that's like the antichrist and i was like wait what you are so extra but then he scared me so i was like well hold up now i don't want to do that because i had been reading the secret i was all about the law of attraction so i was really afraid of doing anything against god so what i did instead was that i started to say god if this is of your will let it be so let it be so 
And so there were then things that I would pray circles around, but now it wasn't about my own personal gain. It was about how can I use this to bless others? So my prayer life became very different because I realized in that conversation at that time that I was praying and worshiping false idols. I created an altar that looked like a vision board. I would put it in my office and every morning I would sit before it and I would close my eyes and I would do all of the practices that my coaching practice told me about and that the pastors that I would watch would tell me to do, which is name it and claim it. Claim it to the point where, you know, you, you, you can see yourself having it. I would sit in the coaching sessions where they would say, Nicole, imagine an orange. You can smell the orange. You can see the orange. Now, practice that every day until you can actually see and smell the orange. I wrote a book called Rock Your Life where I talk about the power of positive visualization and what happens when you see a vision, what happens when you don't, and what you should do. The difference is I started to insert more God in it instead of myself. I started to move into this space where I would practice these positive visualizations, and the, not positive visualizations, but words of affirmation in the beginning of my journey. You know, I'm great. I can do everything. I am smart. It sounds like a bad script from the help, right? So if you don't know the joke, the help were a bunch of maids who raised white little kids. And they would say uh, to the one beautiful little blonde baby who was not really loved by the mom because she was a little chubby. And of course, because Viola Davis had to play a woman from the South who probably did not know the right English, she would say, you is smart, you is beautiful, you is something else. Instead of you are, you are, you are, she would say you is, you is, you is. Okay, that that's the joke. So hopefully you got it. If you missed it, go see the help. So you know, when you start saying these affirmations or you begin to marry Jane your life with post-it notes all over your mirror with quotes about how you're going to go after this life, you know, you completely take out who you need in that in that journey. No, you can't do things. You can do all things through Christ. Somebody forgot to tell you the other piece of it. And I literally shared on a panel in Brooklyn not too long ago, that very thing, because they literally kicked off their panel with words of affirmation. And they were asking me, you know, like, what words of affirmation do you say? And I told them, like, you know, it's not really words of affirmation, it's conversations I have with God, because I think that when we do affirm words of affirmation, and we do this positive self talk, what ends up happening is that we start really negating the fact that God is behind it all. And so if we are having a problem not seeing our beauty, we need to have a conversation with God about, please open our eyes. If we are having conversations about that, we don't feel that we are enough uh, to with ourselves, we need to start having a conversation with God and asking him, God, you know, help me see my value because there's something that's deep rooted there that you can't get yourself past. You need God to take you on that journey. And so when you start seeing new age practices merging with a certain doctrine in Christianity, you have to be very careful, very cautious because the two should never meet. The two should never come into a space where they say they share the same ideology or the same theology or the same thoughts or the same practices. There is something wrong when that happens and unfortunately the, the the spiritual leaders who have the money driving their messages that are making themselves popular, that make you feel good, that's not what the gospel is for. The gospel is to give you conviction, to give you instruction, to, to guide you, to let you know how you are supposed to be in this life. Not to tell you that all the foolery that you're doing is fine and it'll be okay. And so I think what happens is that as girl bosses, we start hearing these mixed messages. We start hearing that they're meshed. And then we start doing things like measuring our success by our money. We start doing things like measuring our success by our notoriety. We start doing things like measuring our success by the amount of followers that we have. We start doing things like saying the amount of money that we have today is not enough. So, so I ask you this question, girl bosses who are believers, who believe in the, the practices that take place in prosperity gospel, which is name it and claim it and claiming these things like money, like money, like everything is around money. Dear God, 
bless this account. Give me this good money. I mean, I have definitely had opportunities or situations where money has been real low. But instead of me saying, dear God, please give me X amount of dollars. Clearly, I wasn't a faithful steward or a great steward over the amount that he gave me. So what I say to him is I will trust you in all things. I will trust that even though it feels a little bit tight, there will be a way made. I also need help in learning how to be better. How can I be a better financial steward in all that I do. So it's a different conversation. But when you do prosperity gospel, what you do is you ask for financial gains. And so think about this. God, help me get more followers. God, help me get more money. God, help me get this. Why would God want to bless you in any areas of your life that would lead you down the path of the seven deadly sins? And if you don't know what they are, it's envy, gluttony, lust, anger, greed, or sloth. And when you think of sloth, you're thinking of just working out. No, it's also in the ability being lazy in doing spiritual or physical work. So if all you're focusing on is just your financial gain and in your notoriety and in your fame, then how will he bless you? Can I just tell you guys a real moment? At one point in the prestige society's journey, I decided that I was in a, sp a space in my life where I needed to now be on a platform where I was seen more. Here's the thing. I will never forget Trey Kearney. If you do not follow her, please go follow her. She, I went to her radio station, I was a guest, and we were talking about Beyonce's Coachella um, concert. And we were just like chatting it up about it. And we started talking about, because you know how girls get, we talk about one thing, we go into another. So I don't even know what we were talking about afterwards. But then she said, you know what? Sometimes we confuse God's blessings with the enemy's rewards. I'm sorry, did y'all hear that? She said, sometimes we confuse God's blessing with the enemy's rewards. She says, the difference is God will never leave you nor forsake you. The enemy will use you to meet his agenda, reward you for doing it. And once he is through with you, leave you in your mess. Did y'all hear that? Did you hear it? So let me explain to you why that hit home for me. And it didn't even hit home until right now. So in this girl boss journey, when I decided that I need it, and, and every time you hear uh, something where it was for my personal gain, I want you to say to yourself, mm, girl, okay? Or say personal gain, right? Let's let's just do that. We're going to have some church. We don't have girl boss church, okay? So one, uh, I decided I needed more notoriety. I decided that I needed to be on TV. Uh, I remember Joyce Myers had written in the uh, Battlefield of the Mind. She said that just like God knows you, the enemy knows you too. And the difference is he will grow with you building a false narrative over your life over time. And so what I remember about this whole experience looking back is that I always grew up on the stage. By the age of three, I was on the stage. My mom was the original Tina Nobles. She was the original Chrissy, uh, you know, um, Chris Jenner. She was the one who was the momager. So I literally was on the stage dancing by the age of three, competing nationally in dance on a solo performance, meaning dancing by myself on stage at the age of six, winning first pra uh, place uh, awards, which means that I loved being on the stage. I always was a performer. I danced throughout my entire life. I stopped dancing probably four years ago. I always sing. I used to be in a singing group. We were trying to get a record deal. So I was always on the stage. Fame and notoriety is something that speaks to my flesh loud and clear. So humility takes a lot of work for me because I remember what happened when I didn't have it. And I don't like what I experienced and I don't want to experience it. So humility is something I practice every day. But because the enemy knows my flesh, what ends up happening is that every now and then I get tempted. And so what happened is that I remember saying, I need notoriety. 
Remember, we're going to say every time you hear something for personal gain, we're going to say personal gain, right? I wanted notoriety. I felt that I needed to be somewhere on TV. I felt like I needed to be somewhere where I was partnering with a brand. I felt like I needed to have opportunities that would allow me to be able to be abundant in the amount of wealth that I was going to receive. Okay. I was not concerned at that time and all of the movement thinking that, oh yeah, like what am I going to do to further the girl boss? See, in my mind, if I got bigger, then I was going to be able to help more because then I would have more followers. How arrogant for us to think we need followers. Like we're little mini messiahs, right? And so that's what I wanted. I needed to get to the 10K mark. I needed all of these things for personal gain. And to do what I needed to hire a publicist. Now, granted, I hired the best publicist in the world. And I began to receive rewards for my selfishness. I began to get in articles. I began to do radio shows and podcasts and TV shows. It was a great experience. I even was, I mean, I remember someone reached out to me from a production company that works with HGTV, Oxygen, and something else. They were trying to do a show on um, watching entrepreneurs take the leap and trying to work their nine to five and going into their uh, their their side their side hustle making it a main hustle and guess what happened they were like well, wait you have a whole crew a whole tribe of entrepreneurs who are trying to do this maybe we need to spin it this way can you give me some of their information and then what ended up happening is that the show didn't get picked up so they didn't move forward with us but these are all these opportunities and you know what's so funny what happens when we get rewarded and I'm going to use the word rewarded because everything is not of God. Everything is not God's blessings. And so what happened is I was like, look at God, y'all. Every time something good happens, we want to look at God. When we're going through a trial, though, we're not trying to look towards God, but we're going to look at God only when things go well. And so we were looking at God. Look at how God is moving. Oh, my gosh. God is good. Right? So in that space, I remember feeling this drought, like this money drought that was so real that, like, I remember paying my publicist and not having money to pay my PSE&G bill. And then being way too embarrassed to even tell my husband because I didn't want him to yell at me. Like, how much are, first of all, I didn't even want to start the conversation of how much are you paying this publicist. And so I just went through it by myself. I went through this depression by myself. Now, in this egocentric journey of my personal gain, I began to lose members and members who I loved so much, who I worked with and saw growth. And I felt like we were really going somewhere and I was heartbroken. And at some point I didn't even have any money. I had no money to even pay this publicist. And so when Trey mentioned like how you will be rewarded and then once he uses you, for his, for his gain or for use, use you for his assignment or his agenda, meaning the enemy, then the enemy will leave you in that mess. When I tell you I was left in financial mess, I was like, I'm talking so much of a financial mess that I literally found myself with student loans that were in a, gar a garnishment, okay? Because all I cared about was paying the publicist. So that meant by any means necessary because I had to keep the campaigns going to build the momentum so that I could be noticed. Do y'all see what was happening? And so these are the things we pray for though. We pray for these things. We don't even keep in mind that we're praying for the things that lead us down the road to the seven deadly sins. Once again, those things are greed, envy, gluttony, lust, anger, and sloth. And so when we start moving into this space of thinking about what's our, our, our prayer life, and like I said, you know how it says, um, you know, we, we, we hear that scripture, ask and you shall receive, and that we believe that that's what we're supposed to do. How about nobody ever says the full scripture? So let me read to you. That particular scripture is actually John 16, verse 24. And this particular verse has two sentences in it, not one, two. And what it says is, until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask 
and you will receive and your joy will be complete. So we literally only say that one little phrase and we make that the scripture that we live by in justifying everything that we ask for that is not of God. So if you claim that you are a believer and if you have a business that you are running, I am telling you right now, you have to change your prayer life. And so for those of you, before I talk about how we, we, we change our prayer life, and I'll just give you a few tips, um, or I'll leave you with a few questions that I want you to think about. I also want to share with you one more scripture that I thought was really important. This is James 4, verse 3, okay? And this is in the NIV um, Bible, version of the Bible. So... The reason why I want to share this is because this is for the girl boss who feels like she's been asking and asking and asking and asking and nothing has been answered. So I gave you some examples of me having prayers that were extremely egocentric, that were only focused on personal gain. And unfortunately, you know, who answered that prayer for me was not God. Like that wasn't God. I mean, God is God is sovereign. And and God did let me tell you something. God did create free will. So that is that means that we are not here to um be forced into what God wants in our life. It is our job to know the word, to understand how to walk in this journey so that way we exercise free will according to his according to God's will, not our own will. And when we start praying on things that are about personal gain for our businesses, when we start forgetting that in building this business, we also need to pray over our families. When we put our business ab above our households, there's a problem. We are not in order. And when you are not in decency and in order, you will feel frustration. And this is what this scripture explains. So in James 4, 3, it says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. Let me go back because I'm not done. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Why do you want to be an entrepreneur in the first place? Who are you trying to help? And if you're trying to help someone, how is your help tied up in personal gain? Now, does that mean that you don't charge for things? Absolutely. I will always live by the words decency and in order. You are still a business. You still have operating costs. Operating costs should include the salaries of everyone who works in that business. That includes everyone from the executive C-suite down to those who are doing the lowest of the lowest entry level jobs. Why? Do I mention that? Because some of you are solopreneurs and you are the only executive in your C-suite and you are the only employee in that company. Your salary must be included, but in decency and in order. <laughs> what, what salary are you, are you gauging here? Is it the salary uh, that's competitive with others who are in your field? Is it a salary that you feel that you are comfortable with? Or is it a salary where you're completely undervaluing yourself and you barely can even do a great job because you're not even getting what you're supposed to get to do the job well? So when you pray, I would suggest that you look for three things. And the one thing is going to be asking for God's will. Because the goal is when you hear things like, you know, he will answer or provide the desires of your heart. That is literally under the assumption that your desires are in alignment with God's will for your life. He's it's it's not the assumption that he just knows that your heart is is exempt from sin because as you know we were born into sin so he's not trying to bless your sin he wants to bless you the heart that is in alignment with his will for your business for your brand for your life and so you want to first ask for God's will 
because we I don't think a lot of us have even asked that question. We're so focused on what we want. And even when we have conversations with God, it's about God give us what we want. Even if we don't use those words, that is the context of what you're saying. So ask for God's will. Two, ask for God's discernment because everything that shines is not gold. I'll leave you with the words, and I need to find a scripture that would support this, but I'll leave you with the with the Treyism. So Trey Kearney, once again, you know, she said, God will bless you, but the enemy will reward you. The difference is God will never leave nor forsake you, but the enemy will leave you in your mess once he is done with you. Mm. I thought that was deep. Number three. Be obedient to his will and his way. Listen, y'all, you got to be very careful because you will ask for guidance. You will ask for discernment. And when he places an assignment on your, in your lap, you just got to be obedient. And being obedient doesn't mean it's easy. I don't know another false doctrine y'all hear and I'll hear it it's just easy just jump just leap like okay when you jump it requires faith when you leap it requires faith and faith is hard because faith requires you to not know where you are going to land faith requires you to trust and believe that when you land you're going to land on pillows and not on a bed of needles and thorns. Like faith is so important. And that's why if you don't ask for God's will, and if you lack God's discernment, when you take that leap and you blindly just have faith without identifying or taking time to, to take care of these two other areas, you just might land on a bed of thorns and needles because you didn't ask for God's will. You were so busy asking God for your own stuff and in your own egocentric ways, you were not able to discern what was for you and what was not for you. So it's really important for you to make sure that you take care of those three areas. So here's the thing, y'all. I really, really, really hope that you guys are in this space where you are able to grow, where you are able to to build your brand in a way that allows you to put God first. At our event last weekend, um, Elaine had a really great panel, or not a panel, but it was a fireside chat called God is My CEO. Spend some time in asking God for his direction. Don't go this thing alone. I hope that this has helped you. I hope it edified your soul, your spirit. And I hope it also gave you some clarification as why you may be feeling some frustration with your brand that you didn't understand before. All right, guys. Love you to pieces. Have an awesome, wonderful, and most of all, blessed day. Bye.